Hi everyone, welcome to Jitandas Biology. Today's topic, Unit 2, Respiration, the Energy Releasing System. The Energy Releasing System. What is that? Respiration. See friends, up to now, we have been in your earlier classes. Respiration means we have been come only one definition. What is that? Taking in air inside and giving out air outside is called as a respiration. Of course, inhaling as well as exhaling. That is the right definition for the respiration itself. But in this uh, grade 10, we are going to know about the respiration in terms of energy. In terms of what? Energy. How the respiration is related in releasing of uh, energy. That we are going to discuss in this uh, chapter. Nana. First, uh, here, respiration is a Latin word. Nana. It is in a Latin word. It means that in Latin word called respire. It has been respiration has been came from a Latin word called as respire. And the meaning of respire is to breathe. What is that? To breathe. See Nana. Breathing and respiration both are different. Breathing means nothing but taking in air inside and giving out air outside is called as breathing simply. But whereas respiration is different, respiration means taking in air inside, of course leaving off air outside at the same time with the air whatever we take with that our lungs will utilize that air and it will produce the heat in our body. It will produce the heat in our body, nothing but it generates certain energy. That energy will be in the form of heat. So that's why respiration is taking in air and production of heat is called as a respiration. So that is the basic difference between the respiration as well as the breathing. Now, see Nana, in the 14th century, in the 14th century, up to the 14th century, nobody knows perfectly about the process of respiration and what are the gases involved in the process of respiration. Nana. So, there are two scientists. Who is that? Labiosia and Joseph Priestley. Laviogen Vardana, Joseph Priestley, they did the investigation upon the properties of gases. Properties of water? Gases. What are the properties? It may be physical properties or biological properties or chemical properties of the gases. Among that, you take Laviogen. This Laviogen has been did an experiment. What is that experiment means? This Laviogen has been did an experiment. In that experiment, what is taken? That is, he has been burnt. He has been burnt, what Anna? That is a powdered charcoal. Powdered, what Anna? Charcoal. Powdered charcoal, he burnt. Where he burnt? He has been burnt in the presence of, a, that is a bell jar. And where this bell jar is kept? This bell jar has been kept under a water trough. That is in a water vessel, in a water trough or in a water vessel. And while he is uh, burning that, at that time a gas was emitted out. A gas was uh, emitted out. These gas at that time they used to call it as a fixed air. They used to call them as what? Fixed air. And this gas is called as a fixed air. And uh, these fixed air only later called as carbon dioxide. It is called what? Carbon dioxide. In the beginning, there uh, nobody knows about this. Uh, that is a fixed air is called as a carbon dioxide. So that's why this laviation has been kept the name called what? Fixed air. And the same person, it is in, a, in activity 1. In another activity, what is that? He has been burnt. He has been burnt what? Phosphorus. He has been burnt what? Anna? Phosphorus. Very burnt. He has been same, that is a bell jar, he took and in the water trough, in the bell jar as well as in the water trough, he taken same like this and then here at that time, here a gas was emitted out, this gas he considered as respirable air, respirable air. This respirable air, in the beginning it is called respirable air, later it is only called as water, oxygen. That is called water oxygen O2. See Nana, before this, the water was the when the phosphorus is burned at that time, 
for the burning of the phosphorus it has been some that is it is not utilized the water vapor it has been not utilized the the water vapor or moisture present inside that bell jar but a second yeah, that is component which has been present in the air with that component which is present in the air and which is elastic in nature the component how it is elastic in nature and is present in the air that gas has been useful for the that is that gas has been useful for the production of a, sorry for the burning of this phosphorus and that gas is evicted out is called what is oxygen so that is in that way the oxygen has been discovered by him and later another thing is that you take a vitiated air he also come to know about what a vitiated air what about this vitiated air vitiated air means actually an air the vitiated air is nothing but what actually it is an air in which carbon dioxide levels are more carbon dioxide levels are what are more whereas oxygen levels oxygen levels are low actually somebody will say oxygen are not there but actually there but oxygen levels are low but whereas carbon dioxide levels are more and for this vitiated air what will happens if you want to make this vitiated as a normal air what you have to do means this in this way you have to do like this this vitiated air for the vitiated air we have to uh, that is uh, that is actually this uh, carbon dioxide you know that we have to do minus that is the extra amount of carbon dioxide present in this vitiated air we have to remove and uh, at the same time we have to add the oxygen we have to add what na oxygen so then what will happen by adding the oxygen and removing of carbon dioxide this vitiated air becomes what na normal respirable air it becomes what a normal air that is normal respirable that is it and indirectly vitiated air is also nothing but called as a carbon dioxide gas what a fixed air or vitiated air or this is also called as a chalky acid gas chalky acid gas this was also known in the beginning called what a chalky acid gas so by this experiments the lab you sure told that oxygen and carbon dioxide these are the two important gases which has been playing in a major role in the process of respiration in that way why is doing like this at that time he has been come to know that another thing what is that and in the process of respiration there are two things are in, involved what is that that is first thing is the first stage is inhalation and the second stage is water exhalation inhaling and water exhaling so whenever that is inhaling at that time the blood become a red in color the blood has become what na red in color okay that has become a very bright red in color why because the hemoglobin molecules present in this blood are attaching or bonding with the oxygen and forming the bright red in color and second stage exhaling in the exhaling stage what will happen carbon dioxide is removed out in the inhaling process oxygen is taken in so in this way they come to know about the inhaling and exhaling there are two stages in the process of respiration and next uh, coming into the a great scientist in the 19th century that is in the middle of the 19th century in the middle of the 19th century in a great scientist called as a john dapper a scientist a renowned actually was a chemist a renowned chemist he is a john dapper he is a renowned chemist and as well as he wrote a book upon the human physiology human physiology means na that is who that study of internal process of course now mbbs students also will take the reference of that book okay still now that is one of the very very famous book for the medical studies that is human physiology for, for the medicos and in this what he told is the human beings the human beings will always receives and nothing but the human being life has been formed from are uh, formed by what with the help of water vapor water as well as a oxygen as well as what oxygen these three are been taken out and whenever these waste metals has been been taken out from the human beings that are uh, excretory metals they excretes what they excretes nothing but the oxides the oxides of what carbon carbon means what carbon dioxide carbon monoxide like this okay they excrete carbon they excrete sulfur they excrete phosphorus and others also and uh, others also so this was a statement given by the john dapper about regarding the gases of 
our body how the, our body will be made up of and what it is be releasing of so it is utilizing the water means nothing but in the hydrogen are there oxygen molecules are there of course oxygen is separated there and it releasing the oxides of carbon sulfur phosphorus and others okay next topic is about events or steps in respiration events are steps in respiration sinana there are five steps in the events are steps in respiration first step is called as respiration second step is exchange of gases exchange of gases at what at in the lungs next transport of gases transport of water gases by what by the blood next fourth step is called what exchange of gases exchange of gases at what at the tissue level next last stage is called what cellular respiration cellular respiration so these are the five steps in the process of respiration and or in the respiration in respiration to utilization of energy and production of energy sorry in production of energy so these are the five steps first step will uh, after the second step second step after this is the third step this is what fourth step this is what fifth step so like this a uh, five steps are there first step that is nothing but the breath of air in and out of the lungs the breathing in a uh, air in and out of the lungs is called as what uh, nothing but respiration taking in uh, air inside and giving out air outside from the lungs is called what uh, respiration exchange of gases in the lungs see nana lungs are attached with the blood capillaries that blood capillaries are bringing the deoxygenated blood from heart to lungs so they would happen that is a oxygen the oxygen which has been entered through, through this air that will be entered into the blood capillaries that is enters into what nana blood capillaries so that has been entered into the blood capillaries at the same time inside the blood capillaries whatever the carbon dioxide is there okay this uh, lungs to that is the oxygen will enters into the blood capillaries and the carbon dioxide present in that blood capillaries will go into what uh, lungs they go into what in uh, lungs so in this way that is the carbon dioxide will go into what uh, lungs so in this way the exchange of uh, gas will be occurs so the oxygen present in the lungs will be comes to the this uh, blood capillaries and the carbon dioxide present in the blood capillaries will go to the lungs so that is the exchange of gas in the lungs next uh, transport of gases by the blood see nana blood uh, will take this oxygen now this lungs are giving oxygen to this blood capillaries no so the deoxygenated blood present in the blood capillaries become oxygenated so that oxygenated blood that oxygenated blood will go to the water na to the tissues will go to water tissues at the same time the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide which is present in the tissues the carbon dioxide already present in the tissues that will be come back to the water na lungs they come back to whom lungs so they would happen lungs uh, whatever the oxygen present in the lungs will be taken uh, through the blood into the tissues and the carbon dioxide present in the tissues will be come back to the lungs in the form of deoxygenated blood by this blood only okay so the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide next exchange of gas is at tissue level that means nothing but i already told you that now the tissues has been take up this uh, oxygen that is taken up by what oxygen and the carbon dioxide which is present in the tissues the carbon dioxide which is present in the tissues has been so first of all we can say that is the blood which is are carrying the oxygen oxygen will taking into the tissues at the same time that is the carbon dioxide present in the tissues will go into what blood so this is exchange will be occurs like this next cellular respiration in cellular respiration what happened the oxygen which is came into the cells or tissues then going react with simple molecules like glucose 
that react with oxygen and they can give rise to what carbon dioxide plus water plus energy plus water energy so in this uh, cell or respiration finally the energy has been produced so this is the five steps or events occurring in what respiration okay you know? and next uh, now we are going to know about uh, a small experiment what that experiment means in the exhaled air in the exhaled air that is carbon dioxide is released outside carbon dioxide has been released outside the carbon dioxide has been released how can you see this uh, exhaled air containing of uh, carbon dioxide by simple experiment Anna. you take two test tube okay if this is a test tube one in that <coughs> test tube one you have been take the lime water you have to take water now lime water in test tube two you take a, a common water you take the common water okay this is what this is a that is a lime water whereas in the second test tube it is what a common water or a general water it is test tube one and test tube two and you blow the air you with the help of straws or with the help of pipes you blow the air into both test tube one and test tube two and wait for certain time after certain time after blowing the air that is you exhale the air okay you exhale the air into this both you have to exhale like this with the help of uh, and a pipe sir you have to exhale the air like this and then uh, then when you are exhaling air what will happen that air exhaling air containing some uh, gases at that time we don't know that what is gas and that will go and react with lime water and this lime water when react you know that carbon dioxide is present in the exhaled air the lime water react with the carbon dioxide when the lime water uh, react with the carbon dioxide it converts into what milky white it converts into what anna? milky white so by this we can say the exhaled air consisting of what carbon dioxide exhaled air consisting of what carbon dioxide topic pathway of air That is how the air enters into our body and how the air goes out from our body. For the sake, first we have to know the parts of respiratory system. Nana. What is that? You know that starting we have what? A pair of openings called what? Nostrils. These nostrils will get so open into what? Nasal cavities. Nasal cavities will open into what? That is pharynx. Pharynx will open into what? Larynx. Larynx will open into what? That is a bronchus. Bronchus will open into what? Bronchioles. Bronchioles will open into what? Trachea. Sorry, sorry. That is before that pharynx to larynx larynx to what trachea trachea to bronchus bronchus to bronchioles bronchioles to alveoli alveoli to blood capillaries So this is about the parts of human respiratory system. Now. First nostrils, a pair of openings which are present, a pair of openings which are present in the nose are called as what? Nostrils. These nostrils are useful to take the air inside. They are useful for the pathway or gateway. They are the pathway or gateway of what? To take the air in and to send the air out. To take the air inside and to send the air outside. Next one is nasal cavities. Nasal cavities, for what sake they are useful? So these nasal cavities are divided into two nana, two nasal cavities. And they are in the center, we have a soft bone called a palate. That palate is operating these are nasal cavities. Inside this nasal cavities, we have what? Mucous membrane. What is that? Anna? Mucous membrane. That is the one future. Second thing, they have the what? Anna? Small, short, hair like a structures. 
Okay, what is the duty of this mucous membrane? The duty of mucous membrane is humidifies. It uh, humidifies the hot air which is coming outside and adjust the temperature of air. Adjust the temperature of uh, uh, air to our body temperature. To what is uh, our body temperature? Adjust to our body temperature. So, that is the main duty of this. Uh, uh, let me explain. Mucous membrane is present inside this uh, nasal cavities and this mucous membrane will be consisting of a sticky substance called mucus. When the outside air is very hot, when the hot air enters into your nose, at that time what happens? That hot air directly enters into your lungs, means your lungs will get a, that is a damage. So to overcome that problem, that is this mucus, that air will go and stick up to this mucous membrane. And they go what happen? That is a, when they are attached to the mucus, that will be cooled down. The air will be gets a cooled down and adjusting according to our body temperature. So that is called humidification of hot hair. It will be done by whom? That is the mucus membrane. Next to the hair like structures which are present in this uh, are filters the air, that is a dust particles which are entering to the, to the air, which are entering through what? Air. Next to fans. Pharynx is in a muscular structure. It is what an as a muscular structure. <coughs> and uh, it is a common passage. It is what an common passage for both. For whom uh, there will be common passage for what? Air as well as the food molecule. That is, the food molecules will go into the digestive system and air will go into the respiratory system. But it is a common passage for both. For the digestive system and the respiratory system. It is made up of the muscles, that is the muscular structure. Next is larynx. Larynx will inside that they have the vocal cords. They have what are vocal cords. These vocal cords will present here. That vocal cords will be gets vibrating when the air inside coming and will going outside. And with the help of that vibration, they are able to produce the sounds. They are able to produce what are sounds. So that's why this larynx is also called as nothing but what Nana? That is a voice box. It's called what? Voice box or sound box. Voice box or what? Sound box of our body. Common name. Scientific name is larynx. And here one thing we have to discuss that is between the pharynx and larynx there will be a structure is there. That structure is nothing but called as a epiglottis. A structure is called what Nana? Epiglottis. And a structure is called what? Epiglottis. What is the duty of this epiglottis? Actually, epiglottis, how it is? It is just a, a flap like structure. It is a flap like muscular structure. Which prevent what? Anna? Entry of. That means, for example, Anna, this is the pharynx. And this is the larynx. And between the pharynx and larynx, like this structure is present. This is called what? Epiglottis. That is called what? Epiglottis. And what is this? This is a pharynx. And this is what? Larynx. And uh, these pharynx and between them, for example, this is a air, that is a food molecules are entering like this. I already told you, pharynx is a common passage for food as well as an air. The air is also coming like this. So that air will be enters into these uh, larynx. From pharynx it enters into what now? Larynx. Why? Because a small tiny pores are present on the membranes of this epiglottis. And that is entering of uh, that uh, the air will be enters from pharynx to larynx. Whereas this pharynx will be gets opened into another this way, this is called esophagus. It's called what? Esophagus. The food molecules are enters into this uh, esophagus. So they would happen, this epiglottis will prevent the entry of food molecules from uh, larynx to what? Uh, pharynx. Sorry, pharynx to what? Uh, larynx. Pharynx to what? Uh, larynx. Very, very important one more term. So that is the duty of epiglottis. Next, uh, larynx after we have trachea. You know, trachea is also called as a, that is a windpipe. Commonly called what? Anna? Windpipe. What is the duty of this trachea? This trachea duty is to sense. To send the air into lungs. So send the air into what? Anna? Lungs. That is the main duty of, uh, that is a <coughs> trachea. That is a windpipe. Next, coming into the branchus. See Nana, branchus are divided into two. That is a right branchus, right branchus and the left branchus. Right branchus and what? Left branchus. Right branchus will enter into the right lung. Left branchus enters into the left lung. Next to branchioles. These branchioles are nothing but that is the smaller, okay, are the smaller and divided units. 
they are smaller and the divided units of branches are called as a branchioles and how these branchioles are these branchioles are nothing but just like a branch of a plant branch of a what na plant and next uh, alveoli alveoli are small sac like structures and which are present in the lungs and uh, they are useful for what na exchange of gases exchange of what uh, gases see in the uh, steps of respiration what we learn at the lungs the exchanging of gases occurs that is the oxygen present in the lungs are entering into the deoxygenated blood and the carbon dioxide present in the deoxygenated blood has been entered into the lungs so that exchange will occurs with the help of what na alveoli how the alveoli will carry out the process by the process called diffusion that will uh, uh, elaborately we can learn in the next video so they are sac like structures they are exchanging of gases and more over they are called as structural and functional unit of lungs why they are called as structural and functional unit of lungs means nothing but they are the lungs are made up of this alveoli itself next blood capillaries what is the duty of blood capillaries means they are useful for supply the water na blood supply the water blood so for supplying of the blood it is useful that is deoxygenated blood is entering into the lungs with the help of blood capillaries and after deoxygenated blood is converted into the oxygenated that oxygenated blood will be again pumped back into the heart with the help of this blood capillary itself so this is finally about the pathway of a and next here one small thing we have to discuss that is about the alveoli what is that na alveoli alveoli are what na they are small and they are sac like structures and uh, they are you they are called as what structural and uh, functional units of lungs structural and what uh, functional units of uh, lungs so nothing but what that is the lungs are made up of it is a uh, that is the alveoli itself the structure of the lungs and the functions of the lungs are uh, mainly depends upon alveoli that's why we can say alveoli is the structure and function of the lungs right like that some millions of alveoli are present in the lungs and the main use of the main function of this alveoli is exchange of gases exchange of what na gases the main use of alveoli is what exchange of gases and if you one of the interesting fact is that when you remove one per one adult person lungs this alveoli and spread it it is a covers an area of 160 meter square an area of what 160 meter square that is a equivalent to what you know tennis court size tennis court size that much size it can be occupied this is about the alveoli so this is the finally pathway of air na so i already told in the respiration there are two stages one is inhalation one is exhalation during the process of inhalation like this air will be enters here that is air is entering inside especially oxygen that is nostrils nostrils to nasal cavities nasal cavity to pharynx pharynx to larynx larynx to trachea trachea to bronchus bronchus to bronchioles bronchioles to alveoli alveoli to blood capillaries in the same manner after exchanging of gas will occurs that air will go outside in the air how it will be going outside in reverse direction anna that is now the blood capillary is to go to alveoli alveoli to the bronchioles bronchioles to bronchus bronchus to the trachea trachea to larynx larynx to what pharynx pharynx to what nasal cavities nasal cavities to whom are nostrils from nostrils they go out from nostrils they go out mechanism of respiration the topic is what mechanism of respiration that means how the respiration process will occurs i already told the respiration occurs in two stages first stage is called as inspiration or it is also called as inhalation second stage is called what expiration or it is also called as what exhalation exhalation inspiration and inhalation is also called as inspire or inhale or exhalation or expiration is also called what expire or simply we can call it as inhale or exhale so this occurs in two stages inspiration and expiration inhalation or exhalation inspire or expire inhale or exhale is called what mechanism of respiration before going to know about the mechanism of respiration first we have to know about the lungs you know na na a pair of lungs are present in the thoracic cavity thoracic cavity means chest cavity and how many lungs are there two lungs you take left lung is slightly smaller in size when compared to the right lung okay what is that na 
that is a left lung a left lung and you take the difference between left lung and right lung you take a left lung will be slightly small in size it is small in a size and it was big in size big and small means don't think much more different very little bit difference is there left side lung is somewhat small in size why because it is uh, towards the left side we have the heart so heart is slightly tilted towards left side that's why we have the, the left side lung will be small in size and uh, you take uh, left side will have the two lobes the left lung is divided how many lobes one two lobes whereas right lung other lung is divided how many lobes three lobes divided how many lobes one three lobes so that is the basic difference between the right lung as well as what na left lung next uh, these lungs if you take the lungs uh, these lungs has been uh, covered by two membranes they have been covered by how many membranes uh, two membranes what are the two membranes that membranes which are covering the lungs are called what pleura that is called what pleura okay which is having the fluid in it is called a pleuric fluid that is called what na pleuric fluid which protect the lungs this pleura will protect the lungs from external shocks and blows it protect the lungs from what na from external okay shocks as well as a blows shocks and water blows from external shocks and blows and moreover on the lungs we have this rib cage outside we have what a rib cage back side we have diaphragm sir back side we have the vertebral column back side we have the vertebral column and sides we have what a rib cage so the rib cage the and the vertebral column as a pleura these are the three protective mechanisms for the heart sorry lungs what is that na lungs first one is rib cage next back side is vertebral column on the lungs they are covered by two membranes called the pleura and in that pleura they have a fluid called what pleuric fluid that protect the lungs from external shocks and blows and moreover these the lungs are how they are elastic in nature that may increase the size or decrease the size during the process of inhalation they increase it during the process of exhalation they will be decrease the size so that's why they are elastic in nature and uh, somewhat spongy in nature also they have been what a spongy in nature also elastic and spongy and uh, so this is about the lungs nana and if you take this uh, mechanism of respiration in the mechanism of respiration two organs are playing the major role what is that one is called a ribs and second one is called what a diaphragm ribs and what a diaphragm so these two are playing the major role ribs and what diaphragm first uh, during the process of inhalation or inspiration what will happen you see these are the rib cage and uh, this is called a diaphragm nana so now, now you see down one this is called what a diaphragm this is called what ribs and uh, see nana this is rib bones this are called rib bone and this is the chest wall muscles and these are the lungs this is a one lung this is one lung and this is a diaphragm down a muscular structure called what diaphragm first during the process of inspiration what will happen the ribs uh, will uh, move forward they move what nana forward they go forward whereas you take diaphragm you take a diaphragm will come back they come what nana back so they were what happen the size of the lung you you know that this is a pulling down whereas the ribs are pulling up so they were what happen the inspiration that is size of the lungs increases when the size of the lungs increases the air pressure inside the lungs will be decreases air pressure will be decreases so the outside air will be that is a high pressure inside the lungs there will be less pressure so what was it left as diffusion you know in the diffusion the movement of molecules will occur from higher concentration to lower concentration so outside air will rushes into the water now into the lungs how mean just now we learn a pathway nostrils nostrils to nasal cavities nasal cavity to pharynx pharynx to larynx larynx to trachea trachea to that is the bronchioles bronchioles alveoli okay in that way the air will enters into the lungs so at that time when these two are occurring at that time what will happen the lungs size will be increased the lung size will be what na increase when the lung size will be increased at that time what will happen the air pressure will decrease the air pressure will be gets a decreased when the air pressure is decreased inside what inside lungs so there by what happen the outside air there what happen the outside air will be rushes into the lungs it rushes into what lungs that is called inhalation that is called what na inhalation 
Now that is expiration or exhalation. You take in the expiration or exhalation. See now this arrow marks indicate indicates inspiration. Okay. This then I'll explain expiration. See. At that time, what will happen? The ribs as well as the diaphragm in, in the exhalation. What will happen? You see, you will see ribs are coming back. Ribs are uh, coming up uh, back. That is uh, now in the inhalation it is went up now. Now it is coming up uh, back. Okay. And in the diaphragm will uh, come up uh, forward. That is a uh, that is a uh, they will become forward. Or else uh, will come its uh, original state. It is went down now. Uh, that will become up like this. Diaphragm will coming up and ribs are coming up uh, down. So they will not happen. The size of the lungs are decreases. The size of the lungs are decreases. When the size is decreasing, what happen? Air pressure increases. Air pressure increases. So internal air from the lungs will go out. That is reverse. In that uh, just now I told now in the pathway of air that is opposite direction. That is reverse. Air alveoli, alveoli to the bronchioles, bronchioles to bronchus, bronchus to what trachea, trachea to larynx, larynx to pharynx, pharynx to nasal cavities, nasal cavity to nostrils, nostrils to outside. So that will be happens. So in these conditions, what happen? The lungs size. Okay, the lungs size will be what decreased. When the lung size decreases, what will happen? Air pressure inside the lungs will be that is a increase. Air pressure will be increase inside what lungs? Inside the lungs. And at that time, what will happen? Then the inside air, that is the lung inside the the air inside the lungs will go out. They will go what now? Out. So that is a that is air inside means what here? Lungs. From the lungs, the air will be going outside. So this is the process of what? Mechanism of respiration. So in the mechanism of respiration, who are playing the major role? Ribs and the diaphragm. Ribs and the diaphragm. And here, children, here one important question is there. Update to type especially. What is that? Means you take in woman respiration. That is in the female respiration. Ribs are playing the major role. Ribs are playing the what? Now major role. Whereas in the men respiration, who are playing the major role? That is a diaphragm. That is called what? A diaphragm. But whereas they ask human being, that is. H U okay when they ask her that is a uh, uh, that is human beings when the, you ask her the human beings means you have to write both ribs as well as a diaphragm ribs and what na diaphragm so these remember not only for your academics but also for competitive exams in the women respiration who are playing major role ribs in a men respiration who are playing major role diaphragm in human beings they are asked means you have to write both ribs as well as what diaphragm so this is about a totally mechanism of respiration mechanism of what respiration now coming into the that is exchange of gases between the lungs and blood capillaries between the lungs and what blood capillaries to some extent i told in the in the pathway of air but it's somewhat detail you see see nana this is you assume this is called as alveolus one of the sac like structure what alveolus and uh, here this is a bronchioles the bronchioles will be like this will enters and divides into the several uh, branches then alveoles will bring the air into it in the air what will be there oxygen will be more oxygen will be what more so this is a blood capillaries which are attached to the alveolus this attached to what now alveolus in the blood capillaries what will be there now this capillary network this is the blood cells these are what deoxygenated blood will be there what is that deoxygenated blood Inside the deoxygenated blood, what will be more? Carbon dioxide levels will be more. So there what happen? The carbon dioxide will be diffused into this alveoli. And in alveoli, what will be more? Oxygen will be more. So the oxygen will be diffused into what? Now blood capillaries. So there what happen? The deoxygenated blood is converted into oxygenated uh, by the process of what? Diffusion. By the process of what? Now diffusion. Very important. Diffusion. Diffusion means you already learned your earlier classes. The moment of molecule from higher concentration to lower concentration correct or not see in alveolus oxygen is more that's why it is diffusing into the this deoxygenated bed in the deoxygenated bed carbon dioxide levels are more so that's why carbon dioxide is diffusing into the alveolus in this vice versa they are being exchanged and the deoxygenated bed is converted into the oxygenated bed so this is the process of exchanging of gases inside the alveolus mechanism of respiration has been explained in theoretical manner no? in somewhat practical Practical means I can't show my lungs, okay, children, but I can show it in somewhat practical. How you will be see? I hope this uh, practicality will give some more clear cut understanding of this concept very detailly. Okay, 
first uh, once again you see that inhalation is hot ribs are going forward and uh, that is diaphragm is pulled backward so the size of the lungs increase air pressure decreases and outside air is uh, entering into the lungs by the process of diffusion inspiration no uh, expiration time what happen these uh, dia that is a uh, ribs are coming back and diaphragm is pulling forward and the lung size decreases air pressure increases and the inside air of the lungs will go what on outside they go what on outside so this is the actually what we learned theoretically now practical you see you imagine that these fingers of my hand are ribs fingers of this hand are called what on ribs and this down hand you assume it as a diaphragm is what a diaphragm and the empty space inside this of uh, my hand is assume as lungs as what on lungs now first i'll explain that is inhalation during the process of inhalation what i told you see here the ribs are coming forward the ribs are coming forward diaphragm is pulled backward it is coming back down okay backward or down so they would happen the size of the lungs increases when the size of the lungs increases automatically air pressure decreases then the yeah, outside air will be diffused into the lungs now exhalation diaphragm is pulled forward and the ribs are coming back and the size of the lungs will be decreased and air pressure increases inside the lungs and they go up and the internal air present in the lungs will be diffused out so this is a small practicality nana about the mechanism of respiration which i explain inhalation as well as what nana exhalation process i hope you understood somewhat clearly by this practicality thanks for watching please like share and subscribe